Hi guys, and welcome back to the Library of Alexandria. And today, guys, today I have a kind of a special video in preparation for um, the kind of like 15 minute history videos that I want to put out on this channel. And you guys voted and you decided that first we would be doing ancient Greece. And that's fantastic. I love ancient Greece. I'm partial to the Romans. Uh, Shay would disagree with me, but I love ancient Greece. So, but what I wanted to do first as kind of a prelude is to talk about how I talk about history and what I feel like I have to add to the conversation. Because if you Google most of this stuff, especially the larger stuff, um, like the Peloponnesian War at large, or Julius Caesar, Julius Caesar for sure, or Alexander the Great, uh, things like this, you can do a Google search. I know I have. I've used things in my classroom. And you can find a wealth, a wealth, a veritable treasure trove of really good videos, some are good, some are not as good, uh, videos of people talking about this kind of stuff. And so I just kind of want to give you a heads up on what you're in store for. I hope you will join me on this ride. I'm super nervous in a way that where I talk about books, like I don't care if you disagree with me, you can say that my opinion sucks and that's fine. But this is what I do uh, in my classroom is talk about history. I also teach Latin, but part of it is is teaching ancient history as well. So I just kind of want to be super clear about the way I talk about history uh, to kind of preclude some of the uh, incidents that, that, you know, could occur because, hey, guess what? It's the internet. So first thing, the first thing you have to stand, understand about me is I do not have a master's or doctorate in the classics. I am not a historian. I am a teacher. I am a student of history and First and foremost, I'm a teacher. And it's not that I don't know about history. All of the stuff I'm going to be talking about is sourced. I read a ton of, uh, I love Anthony Everett. I love Philip Freeman because he writes a lot of his uh, biographies as a narrative. Um, uh, Adrian Goldsworthy, when you need to get a little, a little deeper. But Goldsworthy is pretty much the most kind of like academic text I can, I can stand. I've read some Given. <laughs> Any of y'all out there read some unabridged Given? Ah, oh, man, that stuff is like, if that was any drier, it would chafe. And I even have, you know, behind me over there, you may be able to see them. Uh, maybe not. They're right. You, they're off screen. I have my, my landmark uh, Caesar, my landmark Arian, my landmark uh, Xenophon, my uh, landmark Herodotus, uh, stuff like that. Like my, you know, the, the, the primary, primary sources when I need more information, but there's a wealth of information, you know, online that you can cross reference and look at sources, that kind of thing. So that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that the crown I'm saying is not like coming from somewhere. I'm just saying that my job as a teacher is to convey that information in the method and in a way to where my students understand it and can connect with it. Because if they do not give a crap, if my students don't give a crap, I could be the premier Roman scholar on the planet. And it doesn't matter. It literally doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you know if your students don't care. And that I think is where you can run into like, you know, some conflict. Because, so we had a guy at our school we had a guy at our school who was, he had like a double master's degree in like rocket science, like civil engineering, something like that. And he was here just to teach high school math. This guy was gone by December because he could not teach. He was the smartest guy in our hall, knew more than anybody on our hall. Didn't matter. He didn't know how to control the classroom and didn't know how to convey that information to his students. And that can be a real issue. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about why this is, this is kind of relevant here in a second. So I just wanna talk about history in the secondary education level just in general. And I'm not saying that, that every history teacher is bad. This is untrue. I certainly would not deign to say that oh, the way I do it is the only way it could be done. I am the authority on what a good teacher makes. <laughs> no. That's not at all what I'm saying. There are great history teachers. There is one uh, in the level below me at the middle school that feeds to our school who literally has like he, the, the whole school participates in Frontier Day like every year where, you know, they make like baked beans over a fire and wear coonskin hats and all that kind of stuff. Like there are a lot of good teachers. I had a lot of good history teachers, um, but we all know every one of us has had a bad history 
teacher. And there are many reasons for this. Part of it is that when there are not enough teachers or when you have teachers who are less qualified, if you will, the one thing you can stick them in is history. Because history, you can literally follow a book and, you know, probably achieve the ends that the course needs. It's not going to be interesting, but at least the book literally tells you pretty much everything uh, that you need to know at the, at the most basic level. You can't do that. You can't sit someone who's not qualified like, hey, you know what? You're going to teach advanced mathematics. Hey, you're going to teach chemistry. It cannot be done. You can't really even do it with Latin, even though they do it all the time. They grab English teachers. They're like, here, here's a Latin book. Uh, you took Latin 20 years ago in high school. Teach them how. No. But these kids, I ask them all the time and they so often say that they hate history. And that is such a tragedy, guys. And part of it is that the American culture at large does not value history because history does not translate into a career, which does not translate into dollar signs, which as we know, that is what we as a country kind of value is a, a someone's productivity. That is their measure of worth, which is an irritating thing that drives me crazy. These children do not need your assistance feeling bad about themselves. They don't. And the other thing is that history, like they always, the first thing they say is, I'm bad at dates. <laughs> history is so much more than a list of names and dates. And this is what I desperately try to communicate to my students and what I'm desperately going to try to communicate to, to you guys as I make these history videos. I already have one, my like prototype was my History of the Poppy War video part one, which was really exciting. Like that was what my major was in, like, like East Asian politics. And I love the period of the Opium War. I think, I, th I think it's absolutely fascinating. But I just wanted to have a larger discussion about the importance of history. Like, his, like, people have not changed in 2,000 years. The same douchebags have been arguing over the same douchebag crap for 2,000 years. The frickin' Greeks couldn't get their crap together. The Romans couldn't get their crap together. Everyone divides. Everyone argues. Everyone kills each other. Politics and people are the same as they were back in the BC era. So it helps to draw parallels and to draw like, and to kind of like look through our world with that kind of different lens. And, and, and this is why history, I don't, I don't understand how uh, lovers of stories cannot like history. History is filled with such incredible stories, with incredible characters that if someone tried to write them, if someone went and tried to turn a, one of these historical periods, one of these historical events into a fiction novel, we would call them out for being, that's deus ex machina, that's unbelievable, that, like, no, that could never happen. I submit to you the Athenian Sicilian expedition. It is the most ludicrous confluence of horrible decision making and bad luck that I have ever seen in, like, in any, any event in history. One of the most, the, the most disastrous thing in Athenian history. And, <laughs> like, you can't, you can't write that. You cannot write the Sicilian Expedition. You couldn't. If you did it, people would say you were a bad writer. And since there are so many of these larger-than-life characters, and these just, like, fantastical, unbelievable events that occur, it is up to us. It is our job as history teachers to bring that to life in a way that catches the imagination and just kind of the wonder and the inherent love of stories that we as human beings have for our students. And so when I teach history, I try to tell it as a continuous story. I try to have it a continuous story with continuous characters, with a continuous flow. I like to end, uh, like I'll stop a few minutes early before the end of class if I don't want to enter the next segment. I like to stop my my, my, my PowerPoints at a breaking point and say next week on the history of Greece or whatever to where it's like, you know, it's the preview for the next Netflix episode so that the when they come in, they are excited to figure out, you know, where is this story going next? And so the issue that, the issue that arises is that sometimes 
I will exaggerate. When it serves the narrative, some things will be exaggerated. When I'm teaching, sometimes I don't know. Sometimes, like, again, I have not, like, pored over ancient tomes and written a dissertation. So sometimes there are just gaps that don't matter for the, for the, the forward motion of the narrative, and I will fill them in uh, based on my best guess. And I always tell them, like, guys, you know what? This is what I think. I'll look it up. I'll, I'll correct myself tomorrow if I'm wrong, which I have been before. But most often this appears in the, the historical figures as they interact. For example, Julius Caesar's time. It, the last hundred years BC is filled with the most larger-than-life personalities from Cato the Younger, five years younger than Caesar, but screaming at old men and making them cry, to Pompey, the, the you know, kind of backwater patrician that the Senate hates but needs to oppose Caesar, to, you know, richest man in the world, Crassus, Marius Sulla, Caesar himself, Caesar's rival in uh, in all political office, Bibulus, and then of course the illustrious and original troll Publius Clodius Pulcher. In the purpose of lectures, like these were, human beings are nuanced. No, no man is just one thing. But for the purpose of storytelling, it often assists me to to exaggerate certain characteristics of these historical figures, so that my students can remember them. Clodius Pulcher is a perfect example. He was a very esteemed and respected statesman in his own right. For the purpose of the Caesar story, Pulcher in Caesar's story is a guy who is bent on destroying Cicero and embarrassing the Claudian family. And that is what I play up. All of that is true. The other stuff, that he was a respected politician and was an esteemed statesman, that's also true. That matters slightly less. Because if I do not get these kids to care, it doesn't matter. If kids want to know more, I give them the source. They look stuff up on their own. They study it later in college. That's the professor's job. The ones who control the major. That's their job. My job is to get them interested in history and to care about the events and the things and the people that have happened and to make them want to be there. And I promise, they always remember Pulcare. They always remember Clodius Pulcare. And this shouldn't be a big deal. Like, this shouldn't be a big deal. This is what I bring to this arena. There are many, many excellent, excellent channels that talk about, that talk about this stuff in depth. Some of my favorites are Historia Civilis, like especially his newer videos, like with just like really simple square graphics, because that's the thing. I'm not a super great editor. I don't understand animations. I don't know how to, you know, make these, these maps that all these other people do. So all I have is hopefully my ability to tell a story. But Historia Civilis is great. Invictus, Kings and Generals is fantastic. Um, overly Sarcastic Production, Blues uh, History Videos is also really good. In fact, if you want a history of the Peloponnesian War, you can look up a professor at Yale's lecture on the Peloponnesian War. It, the entire thing is there. You can watch, you can get the same education that those kids at Yale get. You have to make them care first. And the problem that I run into is sometimes people know a lot, like know more than I do, and that's fine. Many people know more things than I do. But I, I don't understand why people with academic knowledge can be so mean. Just like when all these literary authors trash fantasy as, oh, that's not real literature. <laughs> like, I don't understand the purpose of casting aspersions like that. Like, if you are an academic and you have, like, all of that wealth of knowledge, that's fantastic. Share that. Share that with me down in the comments. Let's have a discussion. Oh, did I overlook a detail? That's fine. Is there something that I embellished a little bit to make it more, you know, to make it kind of more understandable? Did I use a catch-all word when there's really kind of a finer distinction there? That's fine. You, you can say something about it, but please understand. To these, to these students and to most people, to most people, the distinction doesn't matter. The distinction is for people like you and me, the people who want to know everything there is to know about a subject. These kids don't care. Most people don't care. And so when you are an academic, and this goes, like, if you are an academic, if you are an intelligent person, and you wield that 
academia and intelligence like a sword in order to browbeat or belittle people or make people feel bad about themselves, you are no better than the petty tyrants that you have read about. Anyway, the way I do it, it may not be, like, I don't know if it's the best way. It works for me. My students care. I hope you will care. I hope any of this sounds interesting. I hope you will, you know, watch them and, you know, maybe learn something. I hope to make it as entertaining as possible because I care very much about ancient history. I know that, you know, the world doesn't really, like, this country doesn't care. Like, literally, it does not care at all. Never mind that the people who, you know, wrote the Constitution and helped found the country were reading, reading Cicero. So anyway, I just wanted to make this video just to kind of talk about how important ancient history is to me and how fascinating I find it, especially as a lover of fantasy. I mean, how many books, fantasy books, have you read where there is some element based on the Romans? The Romans are generally more obvious than the, the like, Greek city-state. Um, influences, but, you know, once you know about 5th century Greece, it becomes really evident that a ton of things are also based on the Greek city-states. That history influences so much about what we here in the SFF booktube community talk about. And so hopefully you will find these videos interesting. But anyway, I hope to get the first one of those out soon so that, you know, we can talk about Greece together. So guys, in the comments, let me know. Did you, do you have a history teacher that you want to shout out in the comments that you like, whether it was in middle school or high school or even at the collegiate level? Like, did you have a history teacher that really kind of like sparked your, uh, your enthusiasm for some period of history? It doesn't have to be Greece and Rome. That's just what that and then the Sengoku era of Japan and then the, um, the, the opium war period. Those are my areas of interest. Or did you, like many, have a bad experience with history in high school and all through school where you didn't enjoy it. I love talking about education, as you have heard, and, you know, I just like hearing what you guys' experiences are. As always, guys, information about my Patreon and Discord is down in the description, and I'll see you next time, guys.